Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, 4 Nerds by Nerds, hang out with this nerd. Nerdark is Ted. And today, DMs Tools, what to work on, locations. We're going to start this video by thanking Nord Games, our sponsor. Down in the description, you can find a coupon code as well as a link to get 10% off anything over on their website. Games by gamers for gamers. Go check out Nord Games. We're talking today about locales, locations, and and what to work on. Right. We're gonna. What do you put in your What do you put in your DM's toolbox? Uh, we haven't done any videos in this series in a while, but the premise is: How do you work on things as a GM, but not work on things that you're not going to use? So that's what we talk about here. And this in this case, we're going to talk about locations and locales in your game, and which ones to work on, and which ones you might want to skip. So. You know, part of this is going to be looking at what your players are drawn to. Sometimes you can do work ahead of time and you wind up seeing that it's not actually doing anything. In my game, I literally had players who said, oh, well, I want to go to this place here. It's Evan Wynn's, you know, bakery. And for a long time, every single session, we started off in the town and that's what everybody wanted to do. Well, clearly, there's something about this place. It's created by the players, at least in its infancy of design. There's something that, that's drawing them to it, whether it be because it's something that they created or because of how I interacted with them. doesn't matter. It's important to them. So clearly, it's something to work on. Right. And it didn't even start that way. And that's the important thing, right? You didn't build this thing and then... And then they were interested in no one of the one of the players said I want to go to the place with the good bread. It just started from that, and then you know, and then the next time they wanted to do it, you asked them what was it called, and they supplied a name, and then they probably went to it a third time. So at this point in your mind, this becomes a place that you can actually work on, and do a write up on, and create you know create Everwind. The, you know, the baker who makes the stuff. It becomes worth your time because you know that they're probably going to keep going back to this place. So that, that's something that you want to be able to do. Sometimes your location, sometimes you know, things that you want to do are prompted by player interest. So be willing to ask questions of them to give you the information. And then post-game, you have something that they've already expressed an interest in. And you know, if you work on it, they will come. Yeah, essentially. Another example in your game is, you know, one of the characters wanted to create a glamping site, essentially. That's kind of like a tavern or an inn in the middle of the woods where nobility could go and kind of get away from the hustle bustle of the city and town and kind of rough it a little bit, but not too much, <laughs> right? So, so they created this place. Well, later on, you know, one of the plots came to a head and there was a ghost, a spirit, and it wasn't going to leave, but instead of wandering the town, we were able to kind of like free it from what was binding it and binding it to a grove where it was kind of reborn. And it was a grove in, in that glamping area that now my players go back there all the time. Uh, they came upon a, an instance where the, the town was kind of being haunt, haunted by pixies and they needed some place to take them. So they went and took them to the grove. So now... Now they go back there regularly to visit the Pixies, to visit the Guardian Spirit and ask for advice, to pray, to meditate. And, you know, it keeps coming up over and over again. So that's a suitable place to work on and build out because you know you're going to use it over and over again. And, you know, so initially you might just write down like a sentence in your notes as you're playing. And, you know, you know the name of the place and maybe an NPC attached to it. And you don't do anything else unless they go back, right? They go back, you add a little bit to it again, right? And if it seems like they're going to keep going back, now this is a place you might want to fully fill out. You you know, put it in a document, put it in D&D Beyond, uh, put it on an index card in, you know, in a, in a box that you, that you can refer to. But as you build these out, these locations, you're, you're going to end up with, you're going to end up with a stash, whether it's in that box, like I talked, whether it's stored on D&D Beyond, whether it's stored on Google Docs, it doesn't matter. But you can keep going back and back again and again. And the thing is, if some of your players are interested in these things, there's a good chance that other players will be too. So you might even get to use it beyond just that one particular campaign or group of players. And the great part about having something where your players are interested in and 
you know, they, they keep going back, this becomes a, a plot seed. You have the ability to say, you know what? This, this session, it's not there. He's not there. It's unavailable. It becomes something that you can remove that element and freak the players out. You can break that, that repetition and make them think. Or it can become something, or and or it could become something that is quest related. It, you you can have something that becomes a, a quest giver, or while well, this person's missing, you know, like Evan Win the Baker. There was a time where I'm like, all right, he's closed down because he needs to move premises because too many people are going because these heroes kept blabbing their mouth about it. Mm-hmm. Now everybody's there. He needs to expand. So today you can't have the good bread. Right, or in a different game, just as kind of like a throwaway flavor to the campaign, we were far, far away from the town, and we were able to get bread that was very similar to Everwind's, and it's like, oh, does that mean it's mushroom-based? Or did someone steal his recipe? Or did he steal the recipe from someone else? So it creates this, these in-game things that kind of tie your players and their characters to the world. And sometimes they're silly, right? Sometimes they're inconsequential. But they could be bigger things. They could be the Duke's Keep or Castle. Uh, they could be the Wizard's Tower. They, you know, in, in uh, Griffin Gaff, we use the, the Elven Library oftentimes. And if there's a magic or lore-based problem the players have, that's where they tend to go. And, you know, uh, Ted uses different NPCs and sections of the library than I do. And we, you know, we just slowly build out on these pieces that we already have, these locations that we already have. Now, this isn't something you would do with necessarily adventure locations, because, again, like you never know if players are going to pick up on those seeds or not. So this is this is more about set pieces and features in your campaign and and your world. And it only works really well if it's a place that your players and their characters are going to spend a lot of time at. So if you're running a game where the players are constantly moving from city to city to place to place and are constantly exploring on the move, then unfortunately this is probably not something that you're going to work with. Um, Or is it? (laughs) For instance, uh, uh, Crazy Jamal was this merchant character that... Yeah, Ner- for- the formerly uh, the formerly known as Nerdic as Ryan would use in his game where he would just show up with his wagon and his crazy magical wear- wares and you could buy stuff from him. So you could do it that way where it's a mobile thing. In our game, we have Harak's brother, Parak, and, uh, and he's got this magical barge that he uses to transport poor people and goods. So he could show up in different places. So you could still sneak some stuff in that way. And that could be like its own fun thing, especially if you do it once and it's a particular character or or kind of setting that that's that could be mobile that your players kind of latch onto and and seem to like. You can just have it spring up again. And then if they're like all about it, it could just be this weird thing that keeps happening. So, you know, if. If you're not going to do it that way, then you know, there, there's there's one other small way. And because we're talking about fantasy games, we're talking about magic, you can have extra planar stuff. We already have spells like the Magnificent Mansion and the Tiny Hut. You know, so I use once in my game. It, it hasn't become a reoccurring location yet, but I had a demonic tea room and the players literally walked through a wall somewhere into an extra dimensional space without them realizing it and they found this demon woman who offered them tea and wound up pulling aside a curtain and said you know do you want to add any extra body parts uh it was a weird little little place one player really got excited by it uh other players are like well we can't tell so and so about this because he's gonna go crazy uh but the the concept of an extra dimensional space that can move from place to place uh, is is very possible. De- uh, Nate's character in one of one of the games that we played had a portable hole, so he called his shop the hole in the wall, and he would go to a random wall. He'd slap up this five foot you know black curtain. Use skywriting. <laughs> use sky. Use the ritual skywrite. And he would open up shop. And wherever he was, he had all his materials. He had everything right there ready to go. And voila. Said and done. 
awesome, awesome thing. And it's a traveling merchant who all he's got, all he's got on him is this portable hole. It's full of all his stuff. Now, another interesting thing that staff uh, editor Doug had brought up was the idea of introducing a survey into your game. You know, perhaps even at the beginning, middle, at some point you survey your players and kind of like ask them certain questions or maybe there's blanks for them to fill in or they can put their own answers. But this might be another place to actually come up with these kinds of locations from, you know, a little bit more work for you in the beginning. You hand it out. Some of them will fill it out. Some of them won't. And then you could use that and you can start taking that information and put it into your game. Uh, I would start off using it sparingly, though, you know, minimalist efforts I would put into it, you know, no more than a couple sentences, throw it in your game, see if they recognize it as something that, that they, they created, they created, whether consciously or subconsciously, if they go to it, then you can start doing a little bit more work on it. But, you know, at first you want to go a little bit easy with that. So you're not building out things that you're not going to use. Unless, of course, you enjoy doing it, then it doesn't matter. Build away. Build away. So what do you, what do you think about, you know, what, what to work on lo locations that they've already shown interest in? Put your comments down below. While you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can hang out with us over at nerdarchy.com. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.